What's up guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week two of the NPCC. Um, this week we are against Brady Active and his Iowa Hall Luchas. Um, Brady is someone who I played, uh, or who is at least in season two of the NPCC, when again I was in the NPCC last. Not sure if we played, I have the feeling we did, and he destroyed me. So, uh, regardless, obviously in my mind I was going out for a, a second win of the season, and a second win in a row... Um, considering it would be week 2 uh, this week, that would mean 2-0 and oh at the start of the season, which is always nice. And looking sort of into the the draft matchups, I was feeling relatively confident um, offensively. It, it's kind of similar to last week. Offensively, I was like, yep, I've, I, I've, cool, I've got this. But the problem again was defensively. Like, my draft um, defensively is really strong. However, just, you know, two, two opponents in a row where they've got a mon that can just kind of break me uh, is a bit scary. Um, I will quickly go over Brady's draft, just once I find it on my phone. He has got Tapu Fini, Mew, Entei, Jolteon, Haxorus, Registeel, Mega Abomber Snow, Delmise, Bronzong, Malamar, and Gallade. Um, so, the, the mon I'm talking about here is basically Mega Abomber Snow. Um, that thing can just kind of click Blizzard, um, Ice Shard, uh, and that, that's it. That's all it really needs like to break my ball. Yes, I have thick fat on my Venusaur, but I have to bring physically defensive. We'll go into that in a bit more detail shortly. Um, and obviously, it hits Tokyo super effective. Um, you know, Blizzard's still going to be doing a lot, even if I'm spit F. Um, and what else have I got? Obviously, Tornadus is weak to it. Garchomp is weak to it. Jirachi was the only thing, and even then, it gets Earthquake. So that was a real threat to my team. Uh, another thing which I was really absolutely terrified of uh, in prep for Brady's draft was the Entei. Just the fact that Choice Band Flare Blitz um, literally kills my whole draft. Minus the uh, Mega Venusaur and the Garchomp in, in one hit. Otherwise, everything else is just decimated in one go and, and there's just nothing I can do about it. Um, so, they were like the two things. I was quite relieved not to see the uh, Bomber Snow because I mean, Garchomp had freedom to do what it wanted. Um, and, and that's what I really needed this game. But again, we'll go over that shortly. Um, obviously, Mew is always a problem. Um, I knew that he would be bringing either Bronzong or Reggie Steel. He needed one Steel type here um, to, to really sort of deal with my Venusaur. Um, the Tapu Fini is always going to be a problem as well. Um, uh, that and Mew, got, I've, it's, I think he's, they're his only options for hazard removal. I know in Delmise as well, but I wasn't really expecting Delmise too much because I've got so many things that can deal with it quite so uh, quite well. Um, so I kind of expected that to be like a bulky defogging set. Mew I expected to be offensive in some way, purely because of like all of the offensive moves and the coverage you can use for my team. Especially when I have Mega Venu, uh, he needs as, as, as offensive psychic move as he possibly can. Uh, Jolteon, well, I very much expected that too, because it does outspeed my whole draft. Um, obviously minus some Scarfers, but I can definitely play around that quite easily. I've got three things, uh, two immunities to Electric in this squad, and obviously Venusaur doesn't care about uh, Jolteon in the slightest, and Kamala also takes like no damage from a, uh, a Jolteon. So uh, I wasn't too worried about that, but I knew it would be coming because it purely outspeeds my draft, and Greninja is a problem to his team. Entei, well, I knew that was coming. We're not going to go over that. Haxorus, I was iffy about because um, he's got so many things which he could have uh, to be like beaten Togetic with. I didn't think it would be a worthwhile bring. And obviously, the fact I have no fairy means that dragon moves um, are super scary against my team that I've bought. Plus, it gets unnerved, so there's no point in me bringing any berries or anything to weaken any poison jabs. And if this thing sets up, I pretty much only have Venusaur to count on at that point. So. Um, looking at Brady's team when I first saw it, I was both happy and scared. Um, mainly because I don't think I'd really prepped enough for the Haxorus. Um, the Enter I had prepped for as much as I physically could with my draft, and that was why I had to bring the Venusaur set I bought. Um, the rest of it I felt quite comfortable. Um, as you can look, Greninja kind of takes on Mew and uh, the Bronzong pretty well. Um, it also takes on Entei really well as well. Uh, it can do damage to the Haxorus and the, the Jolteon with Dark Pulse if he decides to switch it in, so it can do a lot of damage. Um, and Garchomp, as you can also see, he literally has no switch-ins to Garchomp. Um, I'll go over my set in a moment. Um, uh, and I mean, <sighs> Tornadus is kind of here because it, it kind of just lot, like does huge chip damage to lots of different team members, but misses out on KOs a lot. Plus, he does start to sort of get a bit flying weak. A Bomber Snow, Delmise, Gallade... Um, I mean, they're the only three, but a quarter of your draft is weak to to a, a powerful 
uh, spammable type so i definitely felt like it was a, a reasonable bring so like my offense here do really well but the defense it, the problem is trying to obviously have my defense keep up with his offense but we'll go for my team now um we do actually have a i believe it's a rash natured greninja it's rash or mild one of the two um the reason why i didn't have to bring max speed is purely because i know i can't outspeed jolteon but the next fastest thing on his draft is the mew with a base 100 speed so i literally didn't need to bring a speed invest well i bought a speed invested um greninja obviously um enough to outspeed a max speed mew that's all i needed so i could actually run like a rash nature which was quite useful um i didn't really want to run life orb this week because i didn't want to be taken recoil every time i clicked u-turn on something that is just going to chew it like uh the finny um so they're like the the trade-off of timid to like a rash nature um plus the uh the expert belt meant i was still doing a lot of damage to a lot of things in his team um, I was U-turn, spikes, surf, and dark pulse. Couldn't justify bringing water stroke in this week. While obviously it would really help, well, because it wouldn't really help. Sorry, against the Entei with extreme speed, doesn't really hit much else of his draft to be honest. So I didn't really need it. I considered not bringing water stab at all, um, and decided or consider bringing ice beam purely for the Haxorus if needed. But then dark pulse does a load of damage to that anyway. Um, so I just bought Surf in the end because I'm thinking, okay, if Tappy Finny goes, it's just a powerful move. I can I can spam kind of along with Dark Pulse. Um, like I've said, Expert Belt already. Um, look at his team. He's literally got loads of things grounded. Um, I consider Toxic Spikes um, because obviously it does hit poison the Finny, and Finny can be kind of an issue. Um, if I, I like Electivire or um, the Venusaur Drop. So Toxic Spikes was an option, but I felt like with like some sweeping potential in my team, um, Spikes might be quite useful. Next up, we've got Garchomp, which is, uh, I believe it's effectively max speed, but, you know, just enough to outspeed the Mew. Again, I didn't need to fully invest, so I've got max attack, nearly full speed, and then the rest is probably just in one of my defenses. I am Earthquake, uh, Crunch, Swords Dance, and Stealth Rocks. I wanted to bring Stealth Rocks because, again, it would partner up with Spikes really nicely. If I can get up Spikes and Stealth Rocks, Entei is going to be taking about 40% each t switch in, or 37% to be technical. Um, and that means he's a lot less likely to be using Flare Blitz and more likely to be Sacred Fire. I have. I don't even remember turning my phone off, mute, but never mind. Um, obviously, and the, and the Stealth Rocks and the Spikes damage will just be stacking up on the rest of his team. Obviously, Bronze Song will take nothing because it's immune to the Spikes and resist the Rocks, but the rest of his team will take a lot of chip damage, which is really useful. Um, I am Tectonic Rage. I have got the Groundinium Z on my Garchomp, purely because he has no switch-ins once Bronze Song is dead. And obviously, that's why I have the Crunch. If I can get to plus two, um, I think max defensive Bronze Song still takes about 70% minimum, and he's not going to be killing me with Hidden Power Rice. So I'm comfortable just to stay in on that thing and, and set up if I must. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that coverage literally covers his whole team. Um, a plus two Tectronic Rage will take out anything on his draft. So uh, I, I felt like that was a really good kind of, you know, nuke button if I felt something was getting out of hand or, you know, if I needed to kind of pull some momentum back. So that was the reason I bought that. Next up is purely max defensive, max HP. Um, Venusaur, uh, Bold Nature uh, with Knock Off, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb and Synthesis. I had to bring max defense because it's the only thing that took less than half, um, potentially, from a banded uh, Entei. Flare Blitz did 42 to 50%, I think, so could technically live to and stall him out with Synthesis. That was literally the only thing I had for it, other than defensive Garchomp, but offensive Garchomp was too good to turn down for this game, um, so I decided to risk it. Um, if he's anything that isn't choice banned, then I'll feel a lot more comfortable um, in the game because uh, then I can just chew hits so much easier so uh, that's literally the only reason obviously tapu finny uh, i get a free switch in every time tapu finny is in and i can just click synthesis every time or giga drain i mean he has got a few <coughs> excuse me he's got three grass resistances so maybe less giga draining more synthesis um but but yeah venusaur is just kind of there to be fat in front of the entei and uh deals with jolteon uh and the finny and to an extent the Haxorus pretty well um next up we've got electivire i believe i'm assault vest purely because it checks the jolteon really well obviously i'm immune to the electric moves um because of um motor drive shadow ball and any hidden power which is pretty much the standard jolteon set isn't really going to be doing any damage to me um i have thunder punch earthquake volt switch and i want to say fire punch 
purely because I needed something to hit the Bronzong super effectively. That obviously is an Earthquake because Earthquake does nothing. Fire Punch literally doesn't hit the rest of his team, but I just needed something for the Bronzong. The rest of it, I mean, it's Adamant. No, I think I bought Jolly in the end purely in case he bought um, something like the Gallade, which is base 80 speed, and I needed to outspeed it because... Gallade's a bit frailer on the uh, physical side, but especially bulk, he, his special bulk was ridiculous, so I decided to bring Jolly in the end. If I'd have bought Adamant, I could have really been like a, you know, just a, a one-hit wonder kind of thing, and then get out of there with Alt Switch or Switch out and just do massive damage to pretty much anything on his team. His coverage hits him really well. Um, obviously, Earthquake for the Entei, Earthquake for the um, Jolteon, Thunder Punch for the Tapu Fini. Fire Punch for the Bronzong. Four out of six things. Again, it's super effective. It's not bad at all. Um, next up, we have got Max Special Defense um, sort of support Kamala. I bought this thing because, again, it's something that can deal with the Jolteon, uh, the Tapu Fini, the Mew, if it's kind of like a special set, potentially. Um, I think it was mainly the uh, sort of like an answer to a Bomber Snow. But again, if he bought physical Bomber Snow, I'd have been a goner anyway. Um, I had U turn, Wish, Rapid Spin, and. I believe it was Earthquake because I want. I was expecting a Registeel to be honest, um, but he decided not to bring that, uh, which is quite good because um, I didn't have too much on it uh, on my team for it. But kind of redundant as you can see, Earthquake uh, sort of well, unless it's me against Jolteon and Entei at the end, but kind of redundant. But he's mainly there as a supporter and a rapid spinner. I know he shouldn't really be bought as a rapid spinner and be dependent on as a rapid spinner, but I didn't want to bring. I, I couldn't bring Defog this game on Togekiss, so. I really needed some form of removal, especially when I've got Tornadus around, um, and, you know, a lot of my threats like Greninja and Electivire don't really appreciate the chip damage because they're not the bulkiest offensive mons in the world, so I figured, like, bringing that would be useful, uh, and I believe he probably had the possibility of bringing Toxic Spikes uh, and Spikes stack, so didn't really fancy that at all. Finally, we've got Tornadus with Hurricane, um, the Sludge Wave, the Dark Pulse, and... I can't remember what the other one was. Sludge Wave, Dark Pulse, Hurricane, and another move. I can't remember what it is. Um, it kind of destroys his team. Um, Dark Pulse will do a lot to the Bronzong and the Mew. Uh, Sludge Wave will do a lot to the Tapu Fini. Uh, what was it? Was it something to hit Jolteon? I don't know. I don't think I had bought anything for Jolteon because um, I had so many switch ins. I didn't want to keep that thing in anyway. Um, the Entei would just take a hit. <coughs> excuse me, from the Hurricane, and also Haxorus won't appreciate the Hurricane. It's Life Orb, so it's all going to be doing huge damage. He literally hasn't got anything for um, Hurricane. Now, I was bringing Air Slash originally, but Air Slash missed out on a lot of KOs that Hurricane would get, but obviously in the um, Hail, if he decided to bring the uh, Abomber Snow, I would have been kind of screwed. Um, obviously, I would have hit it hard with Sludge Wave. I know I wasn't Heat Wave, but I'm really annoyed that I can't think what my last move was now. Uh, that's, that's kind of annoying. It might have been Focus Blast. It was Focus Blast, because I can I debated between Heat Wave and Focus Blast, but I think Focus Blast hits more things on his draft. Sure, he has more switch-ins to it, but it hits more things harder as well. So I think that was my final move. That's my team. I appreciate I've rambled on for 13 minutes already about my team, so <coughs> I'll have my last cough. and uh, we'll, we'll get straight into the game now, because that's what we're all sort of really here for. So, we're going with the same, I, I, I meant to pick a different battle music, but I just love this music so much, I guess I wasn't really thinking at the time. Again, this is another battle I've had late at night, I think it's about 11 o'clock my time, so last week was midnight, this week 11 o'clock. Um, it's always quite hard to play this late on, so I just, you know, I've got to keep myself motivated. So, I do get a nice lead here, um, I either expect him to stay in click rocks or switch out, because, you know, Dark Pulse could do damage. I get my spikes up. I know he's got potential defog on the Finny and the Mew, but, you know, chip damage is nice. Um, but, however, he clicks Gyro Ball, and it does nearly half. Now, I know Greninja's not bulky, but that is way more than a normal... Um, than a normal uh, Bronzong should be doing. So, um... I am going to switch out into Groot, because it is my physically uh, defensive wall. Um, he clicks Gyro Ball again. And this does a lot, because I haven't made it up yet. So, you know, for a Bronzong... That's not bad damage at all. So, <coughs> at this point, I'm thinking, is he really a physically offensive Bronzong? If he'd have bought Special Defensive, I think I'd have been a lot worse off. Uh, especially Offensive, sorry, not Special Defensive. So, I do Mega Evolve, and okay, I'm like, okay, I'll take any hit, I'm faster. So, I'll click the knockoff, I'll stop that uh, healing from the leftovers. Um, but this turn, he clicks the Zen Headbutt. And, as you'll see, this does way more than I would have liked. Um... That's like nearly 100 damage. 
and I'm like, okay, this thing's definitely physically offensive now. I'm going to click Synthesis um, for him to expect him to expect me to switch out into Greninja, predicting the Zen headbutt, but he just does it again. And I'm like, okay, um, I can't win this exchange. Sure, I'm getting more health, but I can't actually hit him now. I've knocked him off. So I'm going to make the aggressive play into my Greninja. I've got uh, Jolteon and I've got Tapu Fini still to synthesis up on, so uh, I felt like that was a safe play. Um, and at this point, I know Greninja's at a good amount of health still, where it can still do a lot of work. Uh, I'm just going to click Dark Pulse and kill him. Uh, obviously, I was very confident he was like an adamant nature. He's definitely not defensive in any way, so Dark Pulse will kill. In comes the Tapu Fini. He knows I'm not choiced, and I'm going to hard switch out here because I don't have the information yet as to whether this Tapu Fini is either a bulky set or a choice scarf set. You know, the way he bought it in, I was a bit concerned because if I'd gunk shot, I could do a lot of damage to this thing. But I don't reveal it, and I'm like, okay, no, uh, I'll go into Venusaur. He's going to click Moonblast if he's going to attack me. Uh, it's going to do nothing to me. Like, it does, what's that, 25 damage or something? Um, he does get the special attack drop, which kind of scared me. Mainly because I was like, oh, no, this just means Haxorus can come in and set up on me. And I'm like, oh, well, that's that's not what I want. So I am going to um, click Synthesis because I have to. And in comes the Mew. Um, now, obviously, I've already made one play, uh, bringing Greninja in on the Psychic move. So, in my head, I'm thinking he's probably going to expect me to do that again. I have a safe switch into my um, Komala. Unless he's got Psyshock, then that could be slightly problematic. And in my head, I'm thinking, excuse for the snorting, my nose has just kind of gone blocked up for whatever reason. Um, I'm like, okay, if he's actually something like Rock Polish, I'm in deep doo-doos at this point. Um, but he goes for the Giga Drain, and that literally does, like, nothing to Kamala. I didn't actually do any calcs, but I believe this is kind of like a, a bulky Mew, just from the damage it done. Um, and obviously Mew's coverage means it's quite useful. This game, he can run Ice Beam and hit a lot. He can run Giga Drain and hit a lot on my team. Um, but in comes the the uh, Haxorus. I expect him to switch out there because I didn't see an item. I was expecting him to be choiced, potentially, um, to deal with a lot of my uh, faster uh, mons. But he he uh, he switches out, which is nice. Uteb would have done quite a good amount to the Mew because obviously uh, Kamala actually has decent uh, defenses. <coughs> but as you can see, the spikes in the U-turn is actually wearing this thing down quite well. And he clicks Earthquake here, and I'm like, okay, if he's choiced and he's clicked Earthquake, I should be able to take these pretty well. Um, but here we actually see his Life Orb, which is okay. He's not choice scarfed. Choice scarfed. Um, Haxorus is really spooky. But I click Knock Off because I didn't want him setting up. It's not a Z user, so I know he wouldn't have Z Crystal, so Knock Off would be giving me vital information. If he wasn't Life Orb, obviously I would have found out what item he was. I could have played around it. And the fact that I knock off that Life Orb means I can live this Dragon Claw. With that Life Orb boost, I think I would have died. Um, and I can now synthesis up. Now, it gets slightly stally here because he is just going to stay in with the Haxorus. And obviously I need to just continuously heal up my uh, Venusaur to take on his Entei and this thing. I think at this point I've already used three or four Synthesises. And obviously, you only get eight overall, so I do have to kind of just be careful with uh, with what I have. So he does click Dragon Claw, and I think, okay, um, I should be able to live this okay. That looks like a low roll, because it looks like it done a lot less than before. Uh, I click Sludge Bomb and take this Haxorus out. So he's lost his Haxorus and Bronzong already. 6-4 um, up. So this kind of gives me a lot more freedom to play around some things. I can now sacrifice Mons that maybe aren't so important. I'm in range to live... A choice band flare blitz because I'm above half. I'm in the green. I know I can live one as long as he doesn't crit me. He goes for the sacred fire and misses. Now, that's pretty important, I believe, because obviously my Venusaur gets a free knockoff. He loses his expert belt, so he wasn't banded, so it would have been a lot less scary anyway. But this sacred fire now, you know, doesn't do enough to really kill me. Um, I actually think I might recover more health than damage he done. Which is just disgusting for a grass type to be able to tank sacred fires like that. Obviously, thick fat plays a huge part, but at this point, I think I think Brady's just kind of lost for ways of trying to take out my Venusaur. I know that I can take two, so I'm just going to go for damage here, uh, and I take this thing down really low. Um, so uh, I decide that I need to keep this thing around. He's still got Finny. I can still heal up. I'm going to go into my Tornadoes because it's not really too important now. But he actually clicks the Flare Blitz here, so. I would have probably died to this Flare Blitz if he just clicked it um, originally. He would have potentially taken me out. But the fact I was at full health um, means he now dies to the Flare Blitz, which is awesome. It's 6-3 at this point. 
I don't really need to keep Tornadus around. I could have gone into Venusaur here. Um, but that invites the Mew in. And I don't want to give Mew any kind of free switching. Because I still don't know what its actual set is. So I'm just going to click Sludge Wave. Um, it's not going to take this thing out, that's for sure. But it does a hell of a lot of damage <laughs> to a Tappy Finny with a base 130 special defense. That's a non-stab move. I know it's Life Orb boosted, but it's a non-stab move. And that's just ridiculous. Here he reveals the Ice Beam. Um, possibly because, obviously, Moonblast may not take out my Garchomp. Um, but uh, the, the Ice Beam does take out the Tornadus. So we're 5 and 3 up. But, you know, this thing's nearly dead. Um, the Mew has taken some damage. And, obviously, Spikes are up. So it will continue to take damage. And he's still got the Jolteon. I have no reason not to click Thunder Punch. If he goes into Jolteon, that's fine. I can tank any hit from it. And I can click Earthquake. And it will do some damage to something. Or take out the Jolteon. He decides to, excuse me, to sack off the Tapu Fini. Um, and in comes the Mew, and I'm like, oh, this this is scary. If he sets up kind of speed boost move, that is terrifying, but he doesn't. Um, I, he clicks Psychic. I am Assault Vest, so I tank that like an absolute champ. Um, I click the Thunder Punch. It does decent damage, um, considering it's not super effective. This might actually now make me sort of think in my head it's a bit more of a uh, offensive Mew. He does reveal the Roost, so he's got Giga Drain, Psychic, Roost. Um, I'm still thinking, okay, if he's something like... Um, I don't know. Rock Polish. This is going to be really scary. I click the Volt Switch here. Uh, get the hell out of there. And I go into my Greninja. Because I know this thing has a... I know this thing has the... Uh, Giga Drain and it will kill me. But I'm just going to click Dark Pulse. Because it will do the vital chip damage I need. For my Garchomp to pretty much just win the game. At, from this point. Um, Greninja is going to go down. But this kind of just means I win. The fact he didn't click, I mean, if he'd have clicked Roost there, Dark Pulse would have probably taken this thing out next turn, or done a huge amount of damage to the point where it would have died. Um, but Greninja's Dark Pulse does, you know, use up that Cold Berry, and I now know that he either switches into Jolteon and loses it to Tectonic Rage, and Mew, because it's offensive, will die to Tectonic Rage anyway. My trainer is going to do the Funky Dance thing uh, that they do, and uh, this Tectonic Rage is obviously just going to clean wipe out this Mew. From the range of health it is at. Um, I suspect this Mew's last move was probably Ice Beam. Just to obviously hit the Garchomp. And the Tornadus potentially. But Tectonic Rage is just going to absolutely obliterate the uh, the Mew. And um, that's the Mew gone. All he has left is Jolteon. Um, I know he'll probably have Hidden Power Ice. I don't know if Choice Specs will take me out or not. But there's no point in me risking it at all. I will do the thing and switch out into my... Uh, Electivire because it literally cannot touch my Electivire with the Assault Vest on it. And I know Earthquake will take this thing out. Um, there's no point of risking my Garchomp for a kill on Garchomp when, you know, I've got to play for Differential anyway. Um, I believe that's Hidden Power Ice because it's neutral. He has to click Shadow Ball just for as much damage as possible. Um, but I don't believe that's even going to be a 2 hit KO. Well, it would be now because he got a special defense drop, but that's irrelevant because I click Earthquake. And down goes the Jolteon. I didn't mind if, um, obviously... Electrify went down. I still had the Kamala in the background, which could have killed this thing with Earthquake. But that is the game. We do take the 4-0 win. Um, I think I made that look a lot easier than it should have been. Um, obviously, he bought the Entei, which is the threat I was expecting. I expected the Mew, because that's pretty much... You can just chuck Mew on any team to fill any role. Uh, the Finny is such a you know a bulky mon. I was thinking that was going to come. The Jolteon I had in my head was definitely coming, because he needed something for Greninja. You time bringing Bronzong or... Uh, Reggie Steel at some point, and then Haxorus could have been anything else, but Haxorus is also a viable pick. So I thought my team was pretty much well built to, to kind of deal with anything he bought, but I think the way that uh, it panned out just made it look a lot easier than it is. I had it sort of planned in my head. So good game, Brady. Um, he's definitely got a lot to to learn from. As of I still, but I, I had a chat with him about the game afterwards, and you know maybe helped helped him with some things. Um, but uh, I wish, obviously, Brady some real good luck for the rest of the season, and I hope to see him uh, in the finals at some point. So, guys, uh, we are 2-0 in the NPCC. I don't think I've ever gone 2-0 at the start of a season before, but it's kind of nice. Um, that's pretty much all I've got to say. Obviously, leave your comment on what you think of the battle. Uh, leave a like if uh, you obviously did enjoy this video. Make sure you check out Brady's links uh, below to his Twitter and to his um, his uh, YouTube channel, most importantly. Uh, otherwise, I don't really have much else to say. So, I'll let you guys go, do whatever you want to do. And I look forward to seeing you next weekend when we'll have a week or three uh, of the... Uh 
I can't remember what it's called. NPCC. I, my brain is fried. I've been at work all day. Um, and you will also hopefully see um, GBA Week 1 uh, tomorrow. Um, so get hyped for that too. All right, guys. I will actually uh, love you and leave you for real this time. Have yourself a good evening, and I'll see you later. Bye.